do you recall specifically any of the meetings that or discussions you've had with uh, Ms. Novak regarding this? And yes. maybe some of the issues she had at CCI? Yes, um, Sue had a lot of challenges serving as the warden at CCI. And I had regular conversations with her to try to support her. Um, in her role as warden, it was it was a difficult role. And so and I and I believe that she came into it at a difficult time and there were specific issues that she was trying to overcome, um, both with leadership, but also security issues, as we've discussed earlier. And so it was a really difficult position for her to hold. And she confided in me on several occasions about how she was feeling overwhelmed um, and as I said earlier, at one point, I specifically recall her saying that sometimes she wished I would just demote her and I assured her that that wouldn't be the case um, and really tried to work with her to, to, to build her confidence in, in this role as warden of CCI. Um, when I notified her, I, 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 had, I met with every single individual in person related to these changes. And when I met with Sue Novak related to this change, she was relieved and she became emotional because she felt like she was finally getting a break from from the challenges that at cci so when you say she was emotional you mean she was happy that she made the change or was it emotional during the meetings themselves she was oh, emotional that's a little bit leading there <laughs> how about how about you just tell her what the answer is first mr I don't believe it's I don't believe it's leading. I'm not asking her. Yes. I'm not giving her the answer. Um, that being you said, just suggest an answer. So please don't do that. Just I'll, ask I'll, her what the tenor. She said she was emotional. What did that mean? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it, yeah. I, I will. I will rephrase. Um, Ms. Fessahaya, the meetings that you had with Ms. Novak. How would you describe the tone and tenor of those conversations? Um, the tone and tenor of the conversations as it related to her as warden of CCI were. Sadness. I think she was overwhelmed and felt very stressed out uh, by the role. When I told her of the reassignment to Red Granite, it was uh, the emotions were of those of relief and that she was very happy that we were able to move her into a new role. Okay. And at any point, while well, switching gears here a little, at any point in 2020, were visitors prohibited from entering uh, entering institutions due to COVID? Yes, I believe that happened a few days after this letter occurred or was sent out. So that would have been in March, sometime in March 2020. I believe it was March 13th, 2020, which I believe is a Friday. Okay, and obviously the visitation limitation applied to CCI as well. That is correct. Okay, that's all I have, Judge. All right. Hey, do you have any cross? I certainly do. Hitchcock cross. Did you? Um, how many times did you answer Mr. Mullenbach that you don't remember? I'm gonna object to relevance. <clears throat> and I don't. Do you know, Ms. Fezahaya? No, I don't. Okay. Back. And how many times did you tell me I don't remember? Again, I'm gonna object to relevance. I'm gonna allow. Do you know? I don't know. Okay. Do you believe you told me that you don't remember more times than you told Mr. Mullenbach? Yes. Okay. All right. <clears throat> now, there was there's a time differential between when uh, the Department of Corrections discovered the escape and when the Department of Corrections certified the escape, right? Yes. Okay, when did the Department of Corrections certify the escape? I don't remember. Oh, okay. I know when I was notified, I don't know when the certification occurred. When were you notified? Around, I wouldn't say it was about 4.50 in the morning. I was called by Stephanie Hovey, uh, the assistant administrator saying that there was a potential or a possible escape. That wasn't verified until Sue no Novak called me around 6 a.m. that morning, telling me that it was in fact confirmed and it was no longer a possibility. Okay, so sometime around 6 in the morning is when it became verified. Is that fair? 
That is when I was notified. I don't know when it was verified by the institution. Okay. Then it's, um, isn't it true that the victim's office learned of the escape at 8 a.m. that morning? I don't know. Oh, okay. Now, do you know what the control center is? At the institution? Sure. Yes. What is that? It's essentially the central hub of the institution. They review cameras. They have, if I recall correctly, that's where they have their phone system. Okay. And now let's just looking at this checklist that you went over. Uh, who's responsible uh, for making sure that, that checklist is followed? And do you want to see the exhibit or should I stop sharing? Uh, if you can stop sharing, I mean, we can look at it if needed, but uh, let's start with from your recollection, please. Okay, go ahead. Um, can you repeat your question? Who is responsible for making sure the checklist gets completed? The warden or whoever she's delegated. Okay, and how do you know that? From my experience. Oh, okay. Does it say that anywhere on the checklist? I don't know. Okay. And then you told, you testified earlier that you told Warden Novak uh, to complete the checklist, right? Yes. Okay. So, uh, in fact, that's the only, um, order that Novak had, uh, requiring her to fill out this checklist, right? That's the, I don't think I understand your question. Okay, well, if you can't show us on the checklist where it says that the warden has to complete the checklist, it's in fact, it's your order to sue Novak to complete the checklist uh, that prompted the checklist to get completed, right? Well, the checklist or that guideline were for institutions and she was the leader of that institution. It wouldn't make sense for me at central office to complete that because I wouldn't have the knowledge base that an institution would have. Okay, and it says division of adult institutions incident reporting guidelines, right? And you're the administrator of the division of adult institutions, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So these aren't the institution incident reporting guidelines. These are the divisions, right? The division issued it for the institutions. Okay, and that would have been you, right? I personally did not issue the guidelines that was written before I got there. No, but you were personally responsible for them, weren't you? For the institutions? For the guidelines and this checklist that you instructed her to complete, right? Yes, it was under my purview. Right, and so you would ultimately, because you gave them instruction, you would have been ultimately responsible for the completion of this checklist, right? She was doing so under your orders, right? I don't know. Oh, okay. So, uh, again, uh, let's go to page five here. So, Judge, this is exhibit, uh, response exhibit one, page five, uh, when you're available. All right, we're on respondents exhibit five, or did you say two? Which one? I'm sorry. Page, uh, exhibit one, page five. Exhibit one, page five. Okay, I knew something didn't look right. Apologize. Okay, and let's go to page five. Just gonna get the number so much easier. All right, we're on respondents exhibit one. And we're on page five. So, this is section two. Professor do you recognize where we are in this document? Um, if you could go up. Yes. Okay. So, halfway down that page, Judge, it says in bold section two escape, uh, escape attempt, immediate actions. There we go. So, under B, there, do you see that, Ms. Uh, Fisahaya? 
Control Center staff shall immediately activate notification and response procedures. Do you see that? I do. Okay. Are, is Control Center staff, is that synonymous with warden or something else? Uh, that is not synonymous with the warden. Oh, okay. Now, do you recall me asking you in several different ways what conversations with any you had with Carr uh, regarding uh, the your decision or what you say is your decision to um, put charges against Sue Novak? Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And when I asked you, you couldn't remember, right? I didn't remember specific conversations, no. Okay. When Mr. Uh, Mullenbach asked you, you could remember specific conversations, right? I don't believe Mr. Mullenbach asked me specific conversations with Secretary Carr. Mm, okay. Now, you know who Mr. Fuchs is, right? I do. Right. And that's the person who now has uh, the job that Warden Novak used to have, right? That is correct. Okay. Was he ever a deputy warden? Do you know? I believe so. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and how do you know that? I, I, I thought that that was the case. I don't know that for sure. Okay, where was he a deputy warden? I don't remember. Oh, okay. <clears throat> now, is it usual for a warden to get promoted to the position of warden without being a deputy warden? Do you know? Is it usual for an individual to be promoted to warden without well, I'll, being I'll deputy say it again. warden? Is it unusual for a deputy uh, warden or someone to get him to promoted to warden without ever being a deputy warden? I don't know. Okay. And again, this is your. It was your decision, uh, supposedly, to promote Mr. Novak, right? It was in consultation with the secretary and deputy secretary okay. and, my and, okay. and my staff. Excuse me, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I said, and my staff, my deputies as well. Okay, that'll have been Mr. Percy too, right? Mr. Percy and Ms. No and um, uh, Ms. Hobie. Okay, Mr. Percy was the person you didn't uh, investigate in uh, with whose role with uh, regarding his role in the escape, right? Object asked and answered several times at this point. Well, it's the same Mr. Percy, right? That's the word not there's not another Mr. Percy there at the Department of Corrections. I don't know if there's another Mr. Percy at Department of Corrections. Okay, let's just stop this. <clears throat> Once and for all, you never thought of taking any disciplinary action against uh, Mr. Percy, the person who was Miss Novak's direct supervisor. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. I don't need to hear that again then, so let's move on. Great. Even though you knew uh, that Stu Novak said that she had contacted him prior to the escape about Holly Zimdahl, right? I don't remember that. Oh, okay. Again, we're not going into that. You went into that fully at the last hearing. You touched on it again today, and I'm not going to hear it again. Great. Can we go to page 124, please, Judge? It's uh, in R10, it looks like. It's the Lucas Weber uh, letter that we just looked at. That's it. Right, we're on response, excuse me, response exhibit 10. And we are on page 124. Go ahead, please. Okay. Now, did you write this letter? I don't remember. No, Secretary Carr did, right? Or at least it has a signature on it, right? I'm going to object. Argumentative. I think she can ask say if she knew she would wrote it. I'm, at this level, you know, Mr. Cross, that it's not always written by the one one person. So let's 
You want to ask a question? Ask right. A question. We also know even that the person who signs it doesn't even necessarily agree with the contents in the, in the uh, letter. We know that too. Okay. So let's go look here. And perfect. If you could just pause there, Judge. I'm going to read out loud. It says, Warden Novak ended up directing one of the supervising officers to ensure items were being completed when she arrived on the scene. Do you see that part there? I do. Okay. And that's because the escape procedure had not been initiated prior to uh, this is Mr. Uh, Weber's arrival on the scene, according to Secretary Carr. Do you see that? Can you repeat your question? My question to you is, do you see that uh, Secretary Carr opines that the escape procedures had not been initiated prior to uh, Mr. Weber's arrival to the institution? Do you see that? Yes. Okay. And those escape procedures, that's the same checklist we were talking about, right? That's correct. Okay. And then it also goes on to say that Warden Novak ended up directing one of the supervising officers to make sure that the checklist was completed, right? Yes. Okay. All right. And this is July 16th this, that the department knew that, right? Yes. Okay. So, when were you aware of this allegation by uh, Secretary Carr that Warden Novak, uh, in fact, directed uh, the dilatory officers uh, to uh, fulfill the checklist? Judge, I believe Attorney Mullenbach was trying to speak and he was muted. <laughs> he was. <laughs> I apologize. Um, so, I, yeah, I, I object to the portion of the question, um, inferring that the allegations came from Secretary Carr. I don't believe there's been any evidence of that. He signed his name to this document, sir. So, either you're going to continue, you're going to accept that he can sign his name to a document. It doesn't mean that he uh, anything, or it means that he uh, read and reviewed this document and agrees with everything that's in this document. You can't have it both ways. Again, I don't believe that the allegations came from Secretary Carr. That's the basis of my objection. This is uh, let's, Carr. let's go back to what the witness knows. Let's go back to what the witness knows. That's what we where we are. You're aware, Miss Miss uh, Fezahaya, that this document we're looking at exhibit. Uh, what was it? What exhibit are we on? Exhibit ten, page one twenty four or one twenty four right now. That this is a document signed by Secretary Carr, correct? That is correct. And do you believe he was lying when he wrote this? No. No. Okay. Do you believe that Secretary Carr wrote this document? I don't believe he wrote it alone. No. Okay. But it's clear that he signed his name to it, right? That is correct. Okay. So what does that mean at the Department of Corrections when you sign your name to a document? That you sign your name to a document. And nothing more. Is that right? I don't know what you're trying to get at. He signed it. Okay. What does it mean at the Department of Corrections when somebody signs a document? At this point, I'm just going to object to relevance and it's a bit badgering as well. Okay. I, I'm going to allow and go ahead. I, does, it, does it have any other implication than the fact that it's signed? Or could, could this have been signed by Winnie the Pooh, for example? Okay, now that's abusive. Stop. Okay, so, so what's Ms. the Mahaya, answer? Is, is there some meaning? Okay, one second. I think we're just having a problem here because we didn't actually get this witness's knowledge. So, Ms. Fezahaya, do you know how this document was created? Did you have any? role in it? Did you understand anything about how this document was created? And if so, how? I don't believe I had any part in writing this document. Okay. So, do you know what Secretary Carr knew or did not know at this point? 
I do not. Okay, then let's move on. Okay. So what I'm still trying to get at is how about for, for you, when you were the administrator, what did it mean when you signed a document? Yeah, and I'm gonna object her relevance. I'm gonna allow, I'm sure there's plenty of documents in here she signed and I don't know what that means. So we'll see what it means. Go ahead. That I was issuing the document under my authority. Okay. Does it mean that you reviewed the document prior to signing it? Well, when I signed it, yes, I reviewed the document. Okay. That's what, does it also mean that you agree with the document when you sign the document? Yes. Okay. And you, you believe that everything in that document is accurate? Is that true? When I sign documents, yes. Okay. Is that because you're an attorney or for some other reason? Not because I'm an attorney, just because I am a professional that wants to make sure that I agree with what I sign. Okay. Do you believe that's the same uh, practice that uh, Kevin Carr has or something else? I can't speak to Kevin Carr's practices. Well, did you ever see him signing false statements? No. No. Okay. Did you ever hear him say, I don't agree with this, but I'm assigned it anyway? I don't know. You mean you don't remember? I don't remember. Oh. And I don't remember because he disagreed with a lot of things. So I don't remember if he ever signed something he disagreed with. I just know he, we had a lot of disagreements. Okay. Well, but if Mr. Carr is the secretary, what does it matter if he disagrees with you? Because we're colleagues and professionals. Okay. But if he disagrees with you, he's going to get his way, right? I think we went over this last time. That is not always the case. It's not about getting your way or not. It's about working together to come up with a decision together. And we did go over this the mm -hmm. last time. There's been a little shifting here. I think it's probably why we're trying to clarify that. Okay. So, how is it possible that uh, if you look at this letter here and uh, in conjunction with your pre discipline letter uh, that you wrote with Sue, to Sue Novak, stating that she had failed to uh, notify timely um, the victim services um, office? How are you able to explain this statement by Mr. Carr and your predisciplinary letter? Well, first and foremost, this is a termination letter. And so more information could have been uh, received in between the time in which we gave Ms. Novak a predisciplinary letter and when the decision to terminate Luke Weber was made and when this was issued. So I don't believe that there's a conflict here that you're trying to infer. Well, you know that didn't happen because you know that uh, when Sue Novak resigned, right? But Sue Novak resigned after she gave a statement in her pre-disciplinary hearing. Right. And did she give you any other additional statements after she resigned or something else? No, she gave us her statement at the pre-disciplinary hearing. Great. So now we know that there isn't any additional statements that Ms. Novak gave after that predisciplinary hearing, right? No, I don't know that she had any additional statements after her predisciplinary hearing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> because in fact, she said this. Uh, made this statement about the control center and the notification well before the predisciplinary hearing, didn't she? I don't remember. In fact, she told internal affairs about this, didn't she? I don't remember. Just like she told Mr. Uh, internal affairs about Doug Percy and her telephone calls to him about uh, Molly, uh, Holly Zimbel, didn't she? I don't remember. Is that because you didn't find out or because you've forgotten? 
I've forgotten. I haven't reviewed the investigation since 2020. Okay. So you did know at some point, but you don't know today. Is that where? I don't know what I knew then without referring back to the investigation. Okay. And what documents have you reviewed prior to your testimony? I think it was just one statement that uh, I gave and that was it. Which statement was that? Rep. Jack, this is way beyond the scope at this point. Okay. Um, I'm going to allow, but you've got to really tie this up, Mr. Cross. We, this witness has been on for hours and we could have had a lot more efficient in, uh, discussion of this witness's testimony. I don't need to keep on going on and over and over things. She's just saying she doesn't under, doesn't remember. You're making your point that she does that she doesn't remember. At least your point is you believe is that she doesn't remember when you ask her, but she does remember when the, Mr. Mullenbeck's answer. I'm not saying I agree with that, but I know that's your point. So let's just get to being done if we can be done, unless you really have something new. Besides your meeting with um, Ms. Novak about the transfer to Red Granite, was there any time, any other time she became emotional? Yes. When was that? There were a number of occasions. I don't know exactly this. I, I know one time specifically, but the other times I don't remember exactly the occasions. Great. Let's focus on that one time specifically. I know I remember for fact um after the staff assaults occurred that she did become emotional um obviously saddened by what had occurred and really felt for the staff was dr uh secretary car there at that time no uh warden novak and i talked on the phone fairly regularly so um, as it relates to the staff assault, I'm, I believe, from what I remember, those those were phone calls. But we had other conversations with Secretary Carr as well when he was in the room. Okay, was she ever emotional during those conversations? Yes. Okay. Did you ever discuss uh, Sue Novak's emotions with Secretary Carr? I don't believe so. Okay. No more questions. Right. Do you have any redirect? Uh, just a very few. All right. Um, well, do we have to? Sh are we still doing no, this? Stop sharing. Mr. Mullenbach. Ms. Pesahania, you testified earlier that the warden is. No, I asked if I could stop sharing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, you can stop sharing. Okay. Go ahead then. Ms. Pesahania, you testified earlier that the ward is in charge of an institution. Correct. That is correct. And does that include ensuring that employees are properly performing their duties? Yes. And when an escape occurs, incident command is established. I think you testified to that earlier, correct? Yes. In fact, that was one of the pieces of advice or bits of guidance that you gave to Ms. Novak after this particular uh, escape, correct? That is correct. And when an incident command is established, is an incident commander appointed to be in charge of that incident? Yes. And can the incident commander for a uh, particular incident change? Yes. And what is the role of the incident commander? If you could just explain that a little bit more. Uh, from my recollection, the incident commander essentially ensures that the procedures are followed at the time. And so that changes depending on who the highest ranking person is at the institution. Um, and so it's their duty to ensure that the procedures and practices and policy are followed. So if there's different incident commanders for the same incident, are they uh, required to ensure that things that are supposed to be done are being done? Yes. So that duty changes from incident commander to incident commander. Am I following you correctly? That's correct. Nothing further, Judge. Anything on that, Mr. Cross? Judge, thank you. It's a tempting, tempting though. All right, thank you. And Ms. Fezahaya, you are finally free to go, and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a good day.
Yeah. It's, it's All right, forget. so let's take a break here. Before. I'm sorry. It, it's just hard to forget how she didn't show up for the subpoena before. But, you know. Okay. Get, we're all over that as far as I'm concerned. I know. So um, let's go on to uh, what is the plan, Mr. Cross? Are you? Are let's you get in as much Novak as we possibly can. I know. I also, you got Miss Novak to call. The highlight of the whole game. Yeah, the complainant. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, it's been a long time. This is the fourth day. So is Miss Novak, do you think it's going to be done today? I doubt it. But okay, so how because you had told us last week, the last or last week, whenever the last time we were here on the third day, sure. you said she would be short. You'd said that. So I was I'm trying I to figure out how long you Ms. think. Miss Festa would be short. That was before she uh all of her testimony changed. Well, uh, I assume you know Miss Miss uh, Novak's testimony better than you do, Miss Fezza I, I do. I do. So, I don't how long do you think this be? one week from the next. So again, I'm not saying I agree with you, but do you have an idea of when how long you think Ms. Uh, We're ready to go. It's definitely gonna take longer than 4 30, but I can manage okay. the time and I'll build in a good break there. But I Okay, because I, I also like to know when are you going to be yeah. done. That's all are we got. Done? I was anticipating okay. to being done today. I was anticipating Mac to take it an hour or possibly longer and not four. But here we are. Okay, so you're just calling Ms. Novak, then you're resting, correct? Exactly, exactly. And then Mr. Kamalenbach can arrange for his witness to the extent that he has any. Exactly. We already had a lot of people testify in your case, so I don't see all that we have to hear from all these people again. Can I ask all right, question? so let's take a break, come back uh, with Ms. Novak, and then it's about 2.11, let's say uh, to. 25 to 25 take a break come back and then we'll go till 4 30. okay thanks Judge. all right stop recording mute yourselves <laughs> 